Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to adjust the output pressure in your first strike regulator. Now, tooling wise, what are you going to need? You're going to need a 316 Allen key. You may need a silver Sharpie, and I'll explain that one a little bit later on. Uh, I definitely suggest you have some way of measuring your tank's output pressure. I myself have put this together just using an oil filled pressure gauge and an on off ASA. You may need some paintball grease, and you will definitely need some shims to adjust your regulator. All right, so to get started, we're gonna measure the tank first to see where it's at, and then get a better idea of how much we need to adjust it by. So we're gonna do that by screwing it into the ASA, turning it on, and then measuring what we have. So far, it looks like getting about 780 PSI. Now I run a T15, T15s like to run in and around 825 to 850, at least the newer generation ones. Um, so that being said, if I'm sitting at about 780 and I wanna have my tank sit in the 825 to 850 range, um, 60 PSI would bring me to about 845, which should be good. So now that we know roughly how much I wanna increase it by, we'll say 60 PSI, give or take, uh, we need to empty the tank of air to make it safe to work on. So to do that, I have a remote line that I'm going to screw the tank into so I can bleed it out safely. I'm just going to put this off to the side so you don't have to hear it. Almost done. All right, so we're gonna unscrew the tank. Before we get started to take it apart, or take apart the regulator, we're gonna grab that 316 Allen key, and up top of the tank, there's a small little pin. We're gonna push that up and down quickly with our Allen key. If you can push that up and down, then you know there's no more air left in the tank, and it should be safe to work on. So, and grab your Allen key. We're going to push, push that down into the top of the regulator. And then we're going to start unscrewing the cap. Now for the first little bit, you're going to want to push, uh, push down the Allen key as you unscrew the top. Now, once enough of the spring tension that's inside is relieved, you should be able to do it by hand. Gonna unscrew that guy. Just be careful because there are springs inside. You want to take it apart slowly so you don't lose anything that now just for reference this is just the cap there's one spring right here and that guy happens to be the pin that you were pushing down just a few minutes ago all right we don't need those guys so we can set it aside now inside your tank you're going to notice a little brass colored cup we need to take that out so to do that we're just going to turn our tank sideways a little bit give it a little bit of a shake and the guy should slide right out that is actually your piston and it's spring we're going to set our tank aside here's your piston spring Here's your piston and your piston cup. Now, I don't know if you can see already, but right here, there's already two shims installed. Um, so we're gonna take those guys off. So far, it seems like it was a black and gold shim that was installed. Now, the shims that First Strike uses, they use three different types of shims or three different colors. Each color uh, adds a different amount of pressure to your regulator output. Um, the black one will add about 20 PSI to your uh, output pressure. The silver adds about 40 PSI and the gold adds about 60 PSI. Now, like I figured out earlier on, I wanted to add in and around 60 PSI. Um, 50 might have been good too, but since I have the shim that actually adds 60, I'm just going to add that straight on. All right. So we're going to grab our piston cup, have a quick look over before you start installing shims, take off any kind of debris, have a look at your o-rings this guy's pretty dry so i'm going to take some of that paintball grease and you don't need very much at all i'm going to smear a little bit of grease onto the o-rings onto the shaft of the piston top o-ring up here give it a fresh little lube and then i'm going to start installing the shims now rule of thumb with these shims before i do this um you don't want to install more than three shims into the uh, into the regulator. Um, you can do any combination, black, silver, gold, uh, two silver, one black, 
you know, uh, two gold, one silver, um, and you're good to go and safe. They don't recommend anything more than three shims together, though. Now, just as a personal preference, if you need to install three gold shims into your regulator, um, at that point, you may want to consider looking into buying the high pressure version spring for your regulator uh, instead of having to use shims to get up that high. I don't, I don't even want to say it's a safety thing. It's just a preference thing. Um, that's totally up to you. Okay, so we're going to install these three shims. I don't think there's any real difference as to which colors go where as long as they're just stacked nicely together. We're going to take our spring and reinstall it on top of the piston shaft. And then we're going to reinstall it into our regulator. Now to do that, I'd suggest you tilt your tank sideways a little bit, make it just easier and cleaner to install your regulator or your piston without having things slide off and fall inside. Next step is to grab your cap. Make sure that that spring sits in the gold cup before you start screwing it in. All right, you'll be able to go so far doing it by hand, and then you're gonna have to go back to your Allen key, push down, Push it together as you screw it back together. Now, now that's basically sums up how to add pressure and change your regular output pressure. Now that silver Sharpie thing I was talking to you about earlier on, because with a T15 being unregulated, um, your tank's output pressure will affect how its velocity acts or is set at. Myself, I, can, I, I bring out two tanks to the field. Um, I can mule it, so why not? If I run out of uh, air with one tank, I switch to my next. Um, the only thing you have to be careful when doing that is you want your output pressures to be roughly the same. Because to give you an example, say one tank set at 820 and your backup tank set at 860. Well, when you swap tanks to the 860 tank, you're going to be affecting your, your velocity and you're going to be shooting hotter, faster. Um, and, you know, we kind of want to play fair and don't want to do that. So that being said, when, when I go to the field, I will look at the bottom of my tank and on each of my, each one of my tanks, I have its output pressure, and I try to match them up within 5 or 10 PSI of each other. So, as an example, here's a tank on the side here. On this tank, I wrote down with a silver Sharpie, 860. So, if I'm going to play a game and I know I'm carrying two tanks, I'm going to make sure I have two tanks that are close to each other, in and around 860. I think I have one tank that sits at 855. Um, I mean, they're really close together, so your velocity doesn't get affected really much at all. But if you're... Having one tank that sits at 820 and another tank that sits at 860, your velocity is going to change while you're playing. And we just want to keep it fair. Anyways, that's my little tip and trick about the whole Silver Sharpie thing, just so that your tanks are, tank's output pressure is basically the same and you're good to play. Hopefully this video helps you out. Hopefully that made some sense. If you have any problems, questions, concerns, by all means, shoot me a message, shoot me a PM. And uh, yeah, cheers.